Hey there everybody, my name is Bo, and I want to give you some information as a first time gun buyer or owner about why I think you should own a revolver, more specifically a double action, no hammer revolver, versus something like this, which is a normal magazine fed semi-automatic uh, style pistol. And there are some good reasons for this. I want to show you about the different complexities that you're going to run into using and operating a gun like this compared to this. And as a first time gun buyer, what you want to really focus on is trying to build your experience and understanding of your firearm and trying to minimize the amount of things you have to think about will greatly assist you in making sure that you have a good first impression of not only shooting, but using your firearm because using your firearm and practicing is going to be the best tool you have for ensuring that you're able to use your firearm safely and effectively. So come with me. I have five different types of pistols that I want to go over to show you why you should buy this revolver or get a revolver if you can, rather than one of these. Let's start with number one, why I think a revolver double action with no hammer is the perfect gun for a first time gun buyer. Why is that? There are very few things you have to do as a user of this pistol in order to use it. That's why a lot of these are used as backups or given to people that don't know really a whole lot about guns. Why is that? The only thing you have on here is a cylinder release, which opens the cylinder. You put the ammo in. You can easily see if it's loaded or not because there'll either be bullets in there or you know there'll be cartridges or not. You'll have this little lever here, which is used for ejecting spent shells. And then when, you're, when you load up your gun with your ammo, you just close it like that. That's it. Now all you have to do in order to make this thing work is just pull the trigger. Remember, your trigger finger is never on the trigger unless you're willing to fire. And in this case, as you well saw, there is nothing in that cylinder. So that's it. Pull the trigger, five shots, and you're done. Then all you gotta do is just pull, push in this cylinder release, pop out your cases, put in some new ones, you're done. That's it. The safety of one of these things is that you keep your finger out of the trigger guard unless you wish to fire. It's also a very strong trigger. I mean, it's, it's really strong. And what do I mean by double action anyway? Because there are some different revolvers. There are revolvers that have little hammers on them. You can pull the hammer back, or not, like that, well, let me get over this. A double action refers to the method of pulling the trigger will cycle the cylinder as well as use the, hit the firing pin to make the round fire. So it'll twist the cylinder and pop. You hear that click? There's your cylinder, there's your click. That's the two actions. This is probably like a 15 pound trigger. It's really, really strong, okay? This is what I use actually for my carry gun, specifically because of that. It's really difficult in order to make it go off unless you want it to. Um, so why is this the gun you need? It's simple. You put ammo in, you close the cylinder, you pull the trigger and fire. You do that five times and start over. That's it. The other nice part about revolvers is that you can leave these things loaded for a really long time and there's no mechanical parts that are under tension. So these are great for just sitting around if, if needed, um, unlike some of my other options. So that is why I like the double action. The single action, this is a real tricky one for you guys. If you have a revolver that has a hammer, right, you can pull the hammer back and what that will do is cock the hammer, okay? Double action is revolve cylinder, and does the hammer at the same time, that's why there's two actions. Turn cylinder and manipulate the hammer. The thing is, this is one of the strongest trigger pulls you can get of any gun. But the second that you cock the hammer on one of these revolvers, it becomes the lightest. You're talking like one or two pounds in some cases. It's called a hair trigger. Really dangerous. That's why I prefer these double actions because it takes so much more effort to pull the trigger. And if you get startled or scared, right, you're very unlikely to be able to pull, you're less, less, less likely to pull the trigger and make the round go off versus pulling back the hammer and having a one pound trigger. So get a double action, no hammer 
um, revolver if you can. Let's move on to number two. All right, number two is what we're gonna call a striker fire with no external safety. Now, what does it mean by striker? It just means that when this gun, you pull the trigger, there is a, there's a firing pin that you'll probably see way up in there. It's a little dot, right? It will be, it just, there's a hammer, an internal hammer basically that just strikes the back of your round to make it go off. These, this is a Glock 19. It's very popular, and this is probably one of the best options you can if you're gonna go this way, uh, but there are some disadvantages. Namely, you have to remember that this has no external safeties on it. So you have to make sure, is there a round in the chamber? Well, if you're the kind of person who will load your magazine and always run with a hot gun, which means there's a round in the chamber, then you're good. Because if you don't run with a, mag, uh, with a round in the chamber and you try to pull the gun, it won't do anything. And then you gotta rack the slide, okay? Remember, your revolver, all you're doing is just pulling the trigger and turning that cylinder. So you're gonna get around every time. Unless it, you know, so the, this is the one advantage of, the only big advantage of one of these two, like striker fires here, is the fact that you get a buttload more ammo, right? This one will carry five to seven, depending on the type of revolver. This one should carry 15 to 16 rounds, depending again on caliber. You can be much fewer or less, but this is a nine by 19. So a nine millimeter, okay? So you have that option. Reloads will be really fast because you can just press your magazine reload, pop in a new magazine, rack the slide and go. Why do I say this one is still more complicated than a revolver? Is because you have to understand how to clear this gun if there is uh, a failure to feed, right? So in the case of this gun, the magazine will come, the, the ammo comes up through the magazine into the well and sometimes it can get caught or it can get bound up. Sometimes, depending on the quality of ammo you have. So you have to understand how to rack the slide to clear that. You also have to know how to be able to manipulate this thing. So you have to be comfortable with the training of racking the slide, ensuring there's a round in the chamber. Okay. Um, so these are definitely a good option. I like these options, but you have to run this with a hot round, which means a round in the chamber, ready to go, and your magazine, if you wanna have the same kind of functionality as the revolver. So, good gun, just a little bit more complicated, so you have to be aware of those, app, those things. So let's move on to the next one. All right, number three, this is a sweet little gun, it's a Walther CCP, but more important for us, it's our three out of five of difficulty. Reason is it's a striker fire, like the Glock, right? You have no external hammer, it's inside. But this has an external safety, okay? So see there's a little, little slidey right here? That is an external safety. So the reason I say this is more complicated than this Glock, and this is a lot more complicated than this revolver, is you have all the same characteristics of that Glock, right? You still have to be able to rack the slide to ensure a round is in the chamber. You still have to ensure your magazine is fully loaded and ready to rock and roll. If you want to have the same kind of fire as if it's always ready to rock and roll, like a revolver, you have to have a round in the chamber. So you have to always run it hot. Then what you'll have to do, this is the, why it's a little bit more complicated than the Glock, is you have this external safety, right? you have to remember or train to be able to do that. Now, it sounds like a really simple thing, but when you're stupid and being dumb, ah, that is a big difference because you could be sitting there doing nothing, right? Ah, because your safety's on. And that is a characteristic of guns that look like this, which make them a little bit more complicated than a Glock. So if you're gonna, if you really want one of these, you want to find one that has no external safeties and has all those same features. That's if you want to make your life easy. So um, that's the bigger reason for one of these. Again, you get the good capacity. Um, they are, you're going to get the, you're getting a lot more rounds than you would with a revolver, but complexity wise, you have to train with one of these to be effective. So that's three out of five. Let's go to the four out of five difficulty. All right. So four out of five difficulty. This is a Beretta 92A1, um, and I've, 
It's a really nice gun, but it's really big. But it, it demonstrates a great amount of the different features to look out for and why it's a complicated gun for probably a beginner or someone who's not willing to train. This thing has what's called a single and double action uh, hammer, right? It's basically a single and double action. It also has an external safety. So remember our discussion with revolvers about what a double action does. So a double action, in this case, if you pull the trigger, it's cleared, don't worry. Uh, if you have the safety off, right, because we got that little red dot, we're good to go. Pulling the trigger, oh, look at that, that's something to think about. A double trigger, or a double action, when you pull the trigger, you see the hammer, it goes back. A double action will pull the hammer back all the way and then release it. So it pulls back the hammer and releases it, okay? Then, after the round goes off, this hammer now is back in the single position. The trigger gets much, much, much more light. And now, any follow-up shots until you're out of ammo are going to only make this, the hammer go off to shoot the round. So rather than this full pull, now it's just a single. Okay. So that is something to think about, because if you get to this point where you're ready to rock and roll, you have to understand that that safety also decocks your hammer, okay? So that's another thing you got to be aware of, and something for safety's sake that's a really good idea to understand. So that's your safety. So you have this action where not only do you have the single trigger, but the double trigger, but you have to worry about this. So that first pull is going to be super heavy, and then the next pull after that, going to be super duper light and you all have to do this with the guise of understanding that there's a safety in place so you have to train that so this requires a much more training to use than this because of the trigger it requires a lot more than this because you have to also manipulate the trigger and the safety this has the safe the trigger is always the same and it's a hell of a lot more than this revolver because there is only one action to do pull trigger you don't have to do anything else. Okay, so that's a great gun, but you gotta train a lot on it. So as a first time person, I would not recommend. However, there's one I definitely wouldn't recommend for a first time gun buyer, and we'll go over that. Okay, so the five out of five difficulty, and the reason that this would be a bad choice for most people who are just getting started would be a 1911 or 1911 variant. Now this is a 22 training pistol that I use for breaking in new people, because it's nice and heavy, it doesn't have a lot of recoil. But it's not ideal for someone who doesn't either have training or somebody helping them. So 1911s you'll see out in the world will probably be 45 caliber, which is a really big round, and it will punch. They'll, they'll punch hard. So why is this the most difficult one for a beginner? Well, here's the deal. Unlike the Beretta, where you pull the trigger and it will do its thing, right? You'll charge the handle and fire the round. That doesn't work on a 1911. The only thing you can do is rack, and you have to know how to use the slide release, or <laughs> if you want to be able to use this gun, that's what cocks back the hammer. So now you have this gun in single action, which means now the trigger, the only thing the trigger does is moves the hammer. Okay? So that's all it. You can cock the hammer like that if you feel like it, but that's, that's it. You have a single action trigger. So this also has an external safety. As we were mentioning before, it locks back like this. When you put a brand new mag in or you run out, you have to understand that you're going to need to move the, you have to manipulate the magazine. You're going to have to know what the slide release is. You're going to have to understand that now you have to click on the safety if you don't want the trigger to go off. So, and then to unclick the safety to make the gun fire. That is a lot to do if you're not familiar with the firearm. So now, round's gone through, you're open, you slide release, use your thumb to sweep up to safety it, because this is the way you're supposed to carry a 1911. Uh, Paul Harrell uh, refers to this as condition one. So you holster your pistol just like that. The only thing holding back now is you have to dump the safety in order to manipulate the trigger. That's a lot, okay? It's a lot to think about if you're not well trained with that firearm. So while 1911s are fun guns and they're really good, 
the only way you can really carry these things to be effective is you have to have round in the chamber, hammer ready to go with a safety on, and then you carry like that. So that can get a little rough, especially if you get freaked out. Guess what? It's not gonna go off. Not gonna go off. Oh, then it will. So you have to train that safety. You gotta train with the gun and it's gonna take you a while. So it's, it's a great gun, it's a great platform, but I wouldn't recommend it for the new guys. So in conclusion, guys, I hope that was useful to at least give you an idea of the different types of handguns you're probably gonna run into out in the wild. And again, I'm telling you, get one of these. It seems old school, but you're gonna be much appreciated of the fact that this is simple to use because you wanna have a gun that anyone can use. That's the ideal. You don't wanna be explaining safeties or how to do magazines or any of that. You could throw this gun loaded to somebody they just have to point it and then trigger. That's the only thing they gotta do. Granted, you're not gonna get any fun little safeties. Look at that, there's no like cool sights or whatever, but that's not the point. You just point and shoot, that's it. Um, again, this is just gonna be as, as useful as the person using it. So you have to ensure that you're obviously following all the basic rules of firearm handling safe direction, trigger off, finger off the trigger unless we're ready to fire, understand your target beyond, et cetera, et cetera, right? But you've got to remove the complexity from your system. If you're a first time gun buyer owner or just a person who wants a simple solution, get the revolver. Make your life easy and enjoy. So until next time guys, thanks again for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. If you made it this far in the video, why don't you put down wheel gun in the comments below? or something to that effect, whatever you want to call a revolver, but I, I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys are gonna either want to have the cool factor or the practical factor. I would err toward the practical factor myself. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you later.